So today, we're going to continue on. Now, I preach like Mr. Miyagi from Karate Kid. Yeah. We wax the cars, wax, wax on, wax off, then we sand, then we nail, then we paint. And you think, what are we doing? But in the end, you know karate. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> Karate's of the devil. <laughs> Our drummer today is an astrophysicist. I think that's very cool. <laughs> Yo, sure, eh? <laughs> so, we're doing a no child left behind policy. Yep. And we're going to lay foundation after foundation, but we want understanding so the seed remains. Everything I'm saying is the same thing that Justin is saying. In fact, we use the same verses. Our stories are completely different, <laughs> but his verses are the same as mine. It's, it's, it, it, how much they line up, how congruent they are, is amazing. Okay. If you came here today or you listen, listen to this conference and you think, not for me, dismiss it, I want you to know that you are loved. You were loved before you got here. You're loved here. You're loved when you leave. You're left. Left. You are loved. You are loved. Yep. That's the rest. There's a rest. If I say something that you don't agree with, this is a lesson for life. Please, I ask you, don't say, no, that's not true. Say, Hmm, that's an interesting take on that matter. And I'm going to talk to Holy Spirit, who will lead me into all truth, and ask him what he believes about this subject in relationship. And that is the only way to go. Because if you say no, you create a record. You shut things down. Chick, 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 chick. Yep. And then you have to go around the mountain again get to the same place. And some of you are hearing things you heard five years ago. <laughs> Someone came up to Justin yesterday and said, I've heard you before, but I wasn't in a, in a place to receive you. <laughs> yeah. But now I am. We don't have to do that. We don't say no. We can put things aside and ask the Holy Spirit to reveal them to us or the Father, to father us into these truths, and you're safe. Okay? That's the way they go. Jesus tells a parable, and the parable is Mark 4, and in Mark 4, he says, if you don't understand this parable, you won't understand any parables. And the parables are about the kingdom. <laughs> so if you don't understand this parable, you will not understand anything I'm telling you about the kingdom. <laughs> and we all know which parable that is, because it's so important. The, so <laughs> the farmer sows seeds. Correct. Well done, everyone. <laughs> you think, how long have I been in church for? It's okay. Yeah. The grace movement was amazing and vital because it restored a truth to the church. Okay? <laughs> but the fivefold ministry are to build you to the fullness of the stature of Christ, dot, 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 so you won't be taken by every wind of doctrine. Not de demonic doctrine, doctrine. Because if you're a fully manifest son of God or you're in the fullness of the stature of Christ, and someone says, guess what? There's healing in the Bible. You go, yeah. 
It's not a movement you chase. If you are walking in the maturity of Christ, you didn't earn it. You know it was a gift. Then when people bring this grace revelation, you say, yes, that's fantastic. But you're not taken by it. You're not defined by it. Yep. Movements are for the church as God restores the church. But you don't have to wait 2,000 years. Okay? There's many people that walked in the fullness already, way beyond what we are doing as a church. Oh, there's always been a record of immortal, fully manifest sons of God on earth. Someone's always kept that going. It's never left. There's lots of very old people on the earth. Very old. <laughs> so... Um, and the grace gospel, the grace restoration brought a very much law versus grace truth in and really defined it very well. The problem is <laughs> the teachings of Paul are where this is all hewn out. And they said the new covenant starts in Acts, which means Jesus preached to the Jews, lived under the law, fulfilled the law, and preached to the Jews. And his preaching was about that. And so we've gone by the message of Paul, but we've left the, the message of Jesus. And during that whole grace time, you go back and it's Paul they use, not John, and not Jesus. Okay? Not the guys that live forever. <laughs> well, Paul chose. Paul made a choice. They said, if you go to Jerusalem, you will die. He goes, yep. I'm choosing, to, I'm choosing to leave, see it. Um, but Jesus didn't talk about the old covenant under the old covenant. He spoke about the kingdom. Yeah. And the kingdom existed before the earth. Yeah. It exists in the new earth, whatever that is. And there's something after the something after the something. It exists there. And Jesus is saying, truly, truly, this is what the kingdom is like. Not the new covenant. They're right, Jesus did not preach the new covenant. He preached the kingdom. The new covenant gives us access to this kingdom as sons. Yeah? So the words of Jesus are very important. The new covenant is a covenant. The next one. And there's more coming. Because while we are yet sons, what we will become, we do not know. Okay? <laughs> so there's more coming. And there were ones before. Adamic covenant. Abrahamic covenant. Noah had a covenant, Noah had a covenant, um, King David, uh, Jesus put a new covenant, which is superior by far, better than the Mosaic covenant, lots of covenants. Good. And we're currently in the new covenant, and it is so good <laughs> that we reject it. We would accept the Mosaic covenant much quicker than we accept um, the, uh, the new covenant. Okay, So Jesus spoke about the kingdom. In Mark 4, he says, this is the most important one. If you don't understand this, you won't understand any of my parables which explain the kingdom. And just very quickly, a farmer sows seed, the seed goes into the field, and some gets no return because it falls on hard ground, or the birds take it, or the weeds choke it out. Okay? The weeds are the concerns of this world, money and the deceitfulness of wealth. And then there's seed that gets a 30 60, 100 fold return. That's great. And the only difference is the condition of the soil. This is the secret to everything you desire, the kingdom. The soil. And Jesus says very clearly, the soil is your heart. Your field is your heart. How you respond. But the seed is identical. Okay? Now, I'm talking about the seed of salvation today, that you can be born again. That truth. Because the gospel is the power to salvation for those who believe. The good news is the power. That's it. Salvation is removal of sin and death and all its effects from your body, soul and spirit. So it's the big one. So Paul said, I restrain myself to Christ crucified. And he was taught by Gamaliel. So he was a very, very smart man. 
and knew lots of things. <laughs> but he preached this. Because the gospel is the power of salvation. Everything, all the effects of leaving Eden are undone by the gospel for those who believe. Just believing. The word goes out and do you believe. How you believe, your heart, depends on the return you get. 30, 60, 100. Christians get a 30, 60 or 100 fold return and they're all good. 30 fold is very good. But what's on offer, what's being bought for you at a price is 100 fold. So we're going to talk about that today. It's going to be very relaxed. We're just going to go through it very slowly. I want you to rest. And the way the gospel works is by the foolishness of preaching, which is the word, the seed. If you receive it, it grows. We've had things framed up for us in Christianity. If you grow up on an island and your parents say, this is the whole world, you think that's the whole world. Yeah, Things are framed up. Christianity has been framed up for you, depending on what you got saved into. There's angels, there's no angels. You can hear God, you can't hear God. There's healing, there's no healing. And it frames it up. And you read scripture that way. You get revelation, and oh my goodness, it's always been through scripture. Yeah. So healing came, wow, there's healing all through scripture. People fought for that. Apostles, what? Oh, hang on, it's all through scripture. Prophecy, oh, it's all through scripture. Now, we're preaching immortality. Immortality is in the Bible? That's crazy. Where's that? Here's an obscure verse. John 3.16. For God so loved the world, he gave his only son, that those who believe in him shall not die and have eternal life. Okay? Always there. Always there. Always there. Always there. You realize, oh, Jesus undid original sin. Original sin, what we call it, wasn't about sin. It was about death. Will you surely die if you eat this? He said, we'll die. It's about death, death, death. He's undone that. Okay? In the preaching of <laughs> faith built. Yep. So, and you just have to receive that. <laughs> you can't earn it. You just have to receive it's true. And you go to sleep like the farmer. You wake up and it grows. And that's what the kingdom's like. The kingdom does all the work. Because the kingdom is received. Okay, so there's a 30, 60, 100 fold response. And audio man, I'm about to touch this <laughs> and put this here <laughs> as a visual marker. Okay, you're a Christian, the seed's taken root and grown. You've either got a 30 fold, 60 fold, hey, camera person. <laughs> Hundredfold response. Yep. 30, 60, 100. They're your responses. By your soil, by what you choose. A 30 fold response. I'm not saved. <laughs> I don't know Jesus. I receive the gospel and I have a 30 fold response. 30 fold response is the gospel is so good that Jesus has taken away all the sin and accusation against me, and one day I will see him in heaven. The 30-fold. And this is represented by the traditional, or we say evangelical church. Yep, It's a good response. If that's you, fully loved, delighted, and you will have what you say. You will get a 30-fold, which is huge. A 30-fold response. That one day you will see Jesus in heaven and you will live in his glory, in his kingdom and know him. Yes. Yep. And you'll be one with him. You're one with him already, but this is your response. One, the seed goes out and this is how good he is. Okay. Then there's people that say, yes, God is that good, but also he sent his Holy Spirit who lives in me. And now I can walk in aspects of Jesus Christ. I can heal. 
if that is the particular anointing that's on me, or prophesy, or teach, or make money, or heal relationships, or something. Okay, That is how good God is. These people, by response of their heart, say, God is good, but that is crazy. Not that good. Okay? Can you see? It's just a response of goodness. Because it depends on good soil. And good soil says, how good is God? These people say, that's excess. We understand this dynamic. This is the church dynamic which we live in. Okay? And some of us, many of us, including myself, have made this journey from here to here. Okay? 60 fold response. Then there's a hundred fold response, which is clearly in Scripture. <laughs> and this says, as he is, so are you now on the earth. And it can only be received. It can only be received as a complete gift. Your new DNA, this manifests. Okay? All this has effort. There's something you can do. There's something you can do. There is nothing you can do. That's how good it is. Yeah? This is Christianity. That's crazy. That doesn't exist. Or one day, when I die, that exists. Okay? So death, their physical death, the enemy, will give them what their hearts desire. <laughs> Different attitudes that way. That's crazy. That's when I die. Talking to the people of heaven. Engaging that culture. Being anywhere God is. That's for the future. This is, this is the human nature. The speed you're driving is the correct speed. The person in front of you going 58 is an idiot. But the person whizzing past you, boom, is an idiot. Because you're doing the right speed. This is human nature, not these people's nature. All humans do this. This is our nature. Okay? Too much, too little. Goldilocks. No, not really. <laughs> this is the best of the best of church here. The best of the best. The best churches in the world position and live here. So this is the charismatic Pentecostal church. Okay? This is the evangelical traditional church. Okay. All the kingdom. They're all actually raised and seated in heavenly places. Because it's been framed up for them like, by, like this, they live in that box. Yeah. We're breaking that frame, creating a new record by the foolishness of preaching. Just by preaching. Excuse me. I'm saying this to bring understanding. Because not in the Mark 4 version, I think in another version, maybe Luke, he says, for lack of understanding, the seed is taken. So I bring understanding... The birds of the air, which come because of the seed, yes. like, in, like in the natural, <laughs> okay, but with understanding, it stays in the ground. This, into here, is baptism of water. You're in, born again. This is amazing, new creation. Without the power of the Holy Spirit coming upon you, you can raise the dead and heal the sick. It's your DNA. Um, Alexander Dowie, who was in the late 1800s, created a whole city called Zion. It was the healthiest city in the world. And they just healed everything. Because he saw he was born again, a son of God, and he just walked around doing good, destroying the works of the devil. That's what he did. And they just healed everything. Because all sickness was the devil, and we just crush it. Yep. I'm a god, DNA, devil's defeated, smash, smash, smash. Mm. When Pentecost, uh, when, what's it called? When the, late, uh, the outbreak in the early 1900s, all the revivals, Azusa Street. Azusa Street, and those things came along, thank you. Um, team effort, together we'll make it. <laughs> it takes a village to raise this child. 
Um, uh, he refused it. Put the signs up on Zion. Devil's babble. Don't, we don't want it. We don't want, no tongues here. Probably one of the greatest healers of all time. Just out of this new creation. John G. Lake, who you, you will all know, also was taught by him, framed up, did the same thing. Hundreds of thousands of healings, no tongues, no Holy Spirit, just new creation. Just been born again. Amazing. But without the power of the Holy Spirit, it wears on the flesh. <laughs> and Alexander Dowie, at the end, went off. And John G. Lake, who received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I believe, in 1907. But by 1908, his wife had died. Of, they say, of exhaustion. No Holy Spirit to empower you. Baptism of water, amazing. You'll live with God forever. 30-fold response, great. But there's more. God is good. This is baptism of spirit. Receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And now I can do aspects of the Father as a free gift. Okay? But these are a jacket. <laughs> I need to choose... Bigger people in the front row. <laughs> it's uh, it's going to happen. All right. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a theme evolving. This is probably a more accurate way of seeing it, actually. Okay. From heaven, a jacket comes down. And you get empowerment from heaven as a free gift to do whatever is written on this jacket, this mantle. Okay, maybe now I can prophesy. Maybe now I can heal because it's a healing jacket, a healing gift from heaven. It's not me, it's the jacket. And it's good. This is God's design. God's given this to me because I'm not spiritual yet, I'm still carnal. Okay, I don't believe. So a jacket comes and it creates a record. When you learn to ride a bike, you put training wheels on your bike, little training wheels. Okay, and then you can ride a bike. But are you riding a bike? Yes. But no. no. But yes. Yes, you are. But no, you're not. Yeah. That's what this is. And one day the training wheels have to come off. Yeah. And then you learn to ride a bike. And you go backwards a little bit, but then you go forwards. You have to, one day you need to get rid of your healing gift so you can be a real bike rider. You can be a real son of God to heal out of your new nature, your DNA, as opposed to out of a gift. And the gifts are there to teach you what it's like to be a son of God. I've never been a son of God before, fully manifest son of God. I don't know what it's like to prophesy or heal. This comes upon me, and now I can, and now it creates a record in me. Oh, this is what it's like to be a son of God. This is what it's like to ride a bike. I'm creating a record in me of the potential that's already there. Yeah. So if this says... Um, Chris can build a church, a 10,000 see the church, and I feel it, 10,000 see the, done. People will follow me, the angelic will help me, it's on my jacket. I will build a Sunday school, and a school, and a, a business crew, and a newly married crew, and have multi-satellite places, it all works off this jacket. And it's good, that's God's, this is from God, okay? And then I'll go to heaven, and God says, great, can I have my jacket back, please? And I give him my jacket back. And my church and everything that said I was doing well has gone. And God says, now, who are you? Are you like me? Did you stop for little children? Did you turn the other cheek? Would you walk the extra mile? Did you pray for your enemies? Did you lay yourself down for others? I'm going to talk about this a lot. Okay, This is just an introduction. You can see it's already, okay, so we're laying slowly, slowly, so there's understanding, so it remains. I'm without the jacket, because if you want to live here, decision once, baptism of water. You want to live here, baptism of the Holy Spirit, a power to show aspects of the Father's kingdom, Christ's nature. We want to live here, baptism of fire. Fire changes your very nature. 
your very DNA. Sometimes the fire is you loving God and worship. Sometimes the fire is terrible trial on the earth. <laughs> they both change your DNA. If you know this is here for you. 30, 60, 100. Baptism of fire. This is the Israelites leaving Egypt. And they go through the Red Sea. Baptism of water. Through they go. And now they are under the, the covenant of Abraham, of faith. God says, I'll be good to you. They complain, they get cool stuff. <laughs> they complain, they get more cool stuff. There's no punishment. They're babies, like your baby. Okay? Can scream till it wants, it gets rewarded. <laughs> okay? Love comes its way. Okay? We need to mature. Faith. A grace. So the grace gospel of itself, not talking about the people who preached it. I'm talking about how we receive it. Okay? The people who preached it were obedient to God. But we receive it by itself. We'll leave you here. In fact, leave you right next to Egypt. Okay? Of itself. And then, this is going to Mount Sinai. And they receive the law. But we receive the Holy Spirit. The law within us. And this matures us. Okay? Now, <laughs> it was trouble for them because they refused intimacy. They could all go up the mountain. But they didn't. Yeah? They said, just tell us what to do. Ministry. Okay? Church attendance. Ministry. If ministry is your highest goal, you have framed up something on earth and remain on earth. If being, if being Pastor Chris is important to you, because pastors are gifts given to the earth from heaven, you've tied yourself to an earthly reality. Not Apostle Paul. Paul. An apostle. Very, very important. Okay? Paul. Jackadon. An apostle. By the grace of God, it's a free gift. Okay? Ministry. Here, sonship. And sonship is very different to ministry. Some sons, uh, the most powerful sons, may not even be known. <laughs> and they're changing the world. And nobody knows except heaven. Because just heaven for heaven. This is the Aaronic priesthood. This is Melchizedek. Melchizedek is heaven's priesthood for heaven. Already in the next era. And brings heaven to earth. Yeah. Body. Soul, spirit, okay? Natural realm. This church does a lot of natural realm things. Gives out blankets, soup kitchens, those things. Very good. Perfect religion, okay? Looking after the widow and the orphan. Great. 30-fold is a great response. And it's physical. You get your physical body and take it to a physical place on Sunday. Physically put it there. Stand. Sit. <laughs> Stand, sit, and, and physically leave, okay? It's a physical thing, yeah? And you can fake it too. You do that same way, do what everyone else is doing. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Mr. Bean. <laughs> this is, this includes that. You don't leave it behind, okay? This is... Soul, okay? And these do a lot of soul healing. And it's of your heart. So they express themselves. They jump and they dance and they spin and they love God. And their songs show the lyrics of. These are, you know, one day when I die, we'll see the glory. And these are, they know I can have a loving relationship with God now. And heaven can come to earth. 
heaven come to earth. Send revival. Send your presence. As a declaration of God's goodness. God is so good that he would send his presence here now. He would send his presence from the Holy of Holies into the temple. He would do this. Father, send revival. Send healing. He would heal. Father, you be so kind. Come and heal. He is like, God doesn't heal today. God heals today. Come down and heal. Soul. Emotions. Healing. And the soul is very important. This in scripture is called the holy place. Your soul is holy. Very precious to God. Spirit. <laughs> Your new nature. It's not ministry. <laughs> it's who you are. Okay, And you're living from your father's kingdom. Yes. So for an example, let's talk about money. Because the money, the best of the best for money is to maybe, you've heard people that live off 10% and tithe 90. Yeah. That is an amazing response to God's goodness. If your soul can hold it. Yeah. Here, that is, is still a rule. It's still a measure. It's still a measurement of good and evil. Here, I wake up in my father's house, I just do what he's doing, and he pays for everything. Garden of Eden, kicked out, angel and saw the fire. Yep. To go back in there, you must pass through the fire. Your DNA, as much of you is the same frequency of this fire, comes back into here, back into Eden. Now, in Eden... Adam just tended provision. That's all he did. It's a rest. His work, he had work to do before the fall, was to tend provision and guide it, create it, change it, redeem it. But provision came. Then he got kicked out and God said, by the sweat of your brow, you will fight the thorns and the thistles. <laughs> thorns and thistles. Thorns and thistles. Jesus, in the flesh, had thorns and thistles put into the brow. That curse, if you receive it, is over. And now you just tend provision. You just do what the Father's house is doing and you will be provided for. You can fake that. I'm not saying they do, I'm saying it's possible. You can fake this. I'm not saying they do. I'm just saying it's possible. You can't fake this. Because then no money comes. <laughs> I have stories of stories of the offense of being abandoned in the desert. God, you've abandoned me in the desert. So I was literally in the desert when I ran out of money. And the anger of Adam being kicked out of the garden, I would say, came up. It was a disproportional response. <laughs> so angry. You've abandoned me. But God wanted to get into that baptism of fire and change that DNA, and create a new record of his faithfulness. And put me here. And now I just tend provision in their area. I actually don't even think about money. People ask, what are you doing, what are you doing next? I say, I'm going to the UK. I actually hadn't even thought about paying for the ticket. I actually don't think that way anymore. I'm just doing what the kingdom is doing to the best of my understanding, even if I'm doing it poorly. Okay? You want to grow up and be like your dad. Okay? And to grow up and be like your dad, you want to wash your car like your dad washes the car. So you go out and you get a rag and you just swish mud three feet high across the whole car. Yeah? Now, if your father comes, if he's a good father, if he sees that you've done that to be annoying, then you'll be treated accordingly. But if your desire is to be like him, my son is doing that, or my daughter, to be like me. So the best way to live here, the fastest way to be a Christian, or Christ, I should say, is to walk around and pretend you're God. Because that's how children learn to be an adult. Just do what he would do, the way he would do it. 
Because you are. If a giraffe has a child, it's all giraffe. It's all giraffe. Okay? In nature. The giraffe is not its baby giraffe is not its parents, but it is. If God has a child, in substance, it's all God. You are fully God and fully man. In substance, God had you. He is literally your father. You're all God. So grow up and start doing what God would do. That's what's required of you. Jesus said it over and over again. Be like your father in heaven. Partake in the divine nature. Put on a new man that's created to be like God. Be like your dad. And start poorly. Squash the car. Get the fake lawnmower. Cut your sister's hair. My friends. I'm just learning. God knows. He knows your dust. He knows what you're walking through. But he wants you to be like him. But to be like him, you must pass through the fire and leave this DNA behind. Abraham left the house of his fathers. So, <laughs> this is Jordan. This is Sinai for us, Pentecost, Holy Spirit. And this is crossing the Jordan into the promised land. The promised land which has been given to you. What you say to this message is the same thing that the 10, 12 spies did. Remember reading that story and going, I never would have done what the 10 spies did. Because Jesus said, well, oh, Jesus said, we did. He actually does say it. He's quoting his dad. But God said, you said I left you in the desert to die. Well, by your own confession, so be it. You've set the parameters, the reality you live in. Not what's yours. Everyone, we're all here. Reality you live in. Jesus talked about the, 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 the master and the servant said, I knew you were a hard task master, so I bared my gift in the ground. Yeah. Jesus says, well, according to your parameters you've set. The centurion says, you don't have to come to my house. According to the parameters you set, so be it. Yeah? <laughs> That's a whole other teaching. How good is God? That's all we're saying. The same seed, our response. Okay? I'm going to read... Uh, uh, Joseph Sturgeon's texting me. <laughs> I want. To. I'm not reading it. Believe me. So demanding. Just needs my attention all the time. Joshua three. This is them crossing the Jordan. Fourteen to seventeen. So when the, when the people broke camp to cross the Jordan, the priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant went ahead of them. There is a priesthood. Let's go we'll do it first. Now the Jordan is at flood stage all during harvest. So against all natural ideas, they went during the flood of the Jordan. That's when God said to go. Against all natural understanding. Yet as soon as the priests who carried the ark reached the Jordan, so they're carrying the ark, they've got the presence, reached the Jordan, and their feet touched the water's edge, the water from upstream stopped flowing. It piled up in a heap a great distance away at a town called Adam. <coughs> they're leaving their DNA. The Jordan, which Adrian Bill teaches, means descent or death. Okay, they're dying themselves, rising again. They've done it here, has happened to them. Don't you know that you were baptized in Christ's death? Now they are reckoning themselves dead. This is their response, the goodness of the soil. And they're leaving their DNA. It backed up all the way to a town called Adam. I am not a human being anymore. I'm a new creation. I'm leaving the house of my fathers. <laughs> If I have to restore the desolation of the generations, 
I've become something different. I can't give them what I don't have. I need to become something different. It piled up upstream, it piled up in a heap a great distance away at a town called Adam in the vicinity of Zarethan. I bet that means something. Check it out. Well, the water flowing down the sea of the Arabah blah, 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 was cut off. So the people crossed over opposite Jericho. The priests who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stopped in the middle of the Jordan and stood on dry ground while all of Israel passed by until the whole nation crossed onto dry ground. No child left behind. God wants everyone to cross. God loves all these people and lays himself down for people. If someone who was an incredibly public opponent of the church and furious was, was here and fought the church, fought, 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 fought publicly, you'd want them to be healed and know Jesus. We have more mercy on that guy than the church. Because maybe you came from this church from here to here and it cost you something and now you want to be vindicated because now you've got a prophetic ministry. Or you're in the prophetic movement, you're leaving it behind, become a son of God, but there's something in you, you want it to manifest somehow (laughs) to show them who fought you we're laying our lives down for these people. We love all these people. If you're here and you go to healing, you don't stop doing soup kitchens. You don't stop giving blankets. What's it James say to the cold? Oh, be warmed and comforted and on your way. Okay, we don't do that. We still look after the needs and we do this. If you move here, you still heal, you still worship, you still prophesy, you still give blankets. Okay, we become a son of God. It's who's doing it. Here, spiritual warfare, you're fighting, tearing down principalities. If you're tearing them down, it means they're above you. And you're pulling them down on you, okay? And you're, even by you're saying, by you, by, by you frame that up, I am outside the curtain. I'm here on earth. I'm opening the brass heavens, uh, open heaven, making a hole in the sky, you know, the way you framed it up, by your definition, so be it to you. And it takes time, but it will work. Or you're a son of God, like Paul, who just walked into Ephesus. You can't fake it. Do you know who you are? There's a lady I met in America, and she was the teacher to a church of at least 10,000. I think it may be 20,000 now, about the time of 10,000. And she did deliverance ministry and taught deliverance ministry out of her loving response to God. She loves God, so she gets a full reward for it. It's love. It's what you want to do for God. And then she heard, as he is, so are you now on the earth. <laughs> and she went to bed that night, and that night, uh, a spirit, like this old woman spirit came into the room, and it could be fully seen. And she jumps up and straight into warfare mode, closing the doors, where I give the access point, etc., etc. How can this thing be here? All, all, all true. And she learnt them. And then her husband, <laughs> he's a very relaxed man, he says, honey, as he is. And she remembered, fire my eyes, saw my mouth, and as soon as the spirit saw that she knew, Gone. And then she got all her books that she wrote. She wrote. She left it behind. Jack it off and become a mature son. Yep. So can you still do spiritual warfare? Yes. Can you still prophesy? Absolutely. Can you still give blankets? Yes. But who is doing it? Who's doing it? Someone way down here and God's in heaven and here am I on earth. Someone who's in ministry and has an anointing and a gifting and going on with their ministry. And it's a, with demons, it's like a shootout. <laughs> or a fully manifest son of God. We're supposed to wrap this show up. If it sounds too easy, it's supposed to be like this. We're supposed to fix the whole cosmos. 
if you're busy doing fighting over a little piece of land against the principality, how are you going to fix up Andromeda? Exactly. Come on. <laughs> has been given. Raised and seated. Everything you need for life and godliness has been given. You don't even have to ask for it. You just maybe ask for help how to become it. But it's been given to you. Because it's your DNA. If you're a policeman and you see someone robbing a store, you don't go, uh, someone's robbing a store. Um, can I? Should I do something? Can I do something about that? Can I have your permission, please? Yeah. Okay. If you kept doing that, you're not a very good policeman. If you're the stationary master of a large corporation, you keep ringing the CEO. Hey, CEO, um, I want to buy some staplers. Can I? Can I buy some staplers? <laughs> well, I guess I can. <laughs> oh, sorry to bother you again. Uh, can I? Uh, if, it, if it is your will, if, if, if please, CEO. <laughs> CEO, just, just, just please be your will, please. If you'd be so kind, uh, can I buy some, uh, some sheets of paper and some crayons? You're not a very good station master and you won't be promoted. Just do your job. Everything you need for life and godliness has been given to you. Immaturity or carnality is God, why are there earthquakes? Maturity is Chris, why are there earthquakes? Immaturity is God, why is there sickness and disease on the earth? Maturity is Chris, uh, why is there sickness and disease on the earth? I gave it to you to look after. That's your room. Clean your room. Heaven belongs to God, but the earth, and well, I mean all creation, belongs to man. He gave it to us. How we frame it up. It's for ours to do. When Jesus Christ returns, will he find faith on the earth? Not this faith, faith in God. The faith of God. We speak and create. This is living on earth out of earth supply. We need Western medicine or nutrition. And they're both gifts, they're both good, but there's a cost to it. Okay? Western medicine is probably a very good example because these both work no matter how intentioned you are by the knowledge of good and evil. You try to do good, but there's always it's the one fruit. Yep. So Western medicine does great things, but there's a cost. Even understanding nutrition does great things, but there's a cost. Because then you know, if I eat that, that will do that to my body. You framed it up. Now you want to attain a promise. You want to attain a promise, you've created, now you've created an Ishmael. I've created an Ishmael to get health. Western medicine and or nutrition. Okay? To get the promise. I've learned about it, because this is what I did. I learned and learned and learned about it. But now I want to go to healing. So I now have to kick Ishmael out of the camp, which is painful if my ministry is attached to it, my money is attached to it, my identity is attached to it, or just years of my life. And now I receive healing by faith. Faith, 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 faith. I get a faith ministry or healing ministry or that reality in me. But it's an Ishmael for the promise of being Christ himself. And now receiving by faith ministry must go out. I must be Jesus. <laughs> and it's a rest. And I say this very sensitively because I have suffered medically in my life. But I have to work out Jesus isn't sick. I'm not sick. And let that be the seed that goes in and then just rest knowing that that does the job. No flesh inherits the kingdom. The high priest couldn't sweat. It must be by the invisible promise. God's love language is just to be believed. That's all it is. And that's why we don't like it. So your strengths are your weaknesses. You have the ability to confess things in and hold your 
confession, hold your confession, hold your confession. You have that ability. That's your go-to. But you will never, ever... That is good, but it does contain effort. Not everyone can do that. Maybe it's just your personality type. Or maybe your sickness doesn't fatigue you, so you can hold your mental strength together. But this is for everyone. If you leave being a human and be Christ, whatever area you are, growing up into maturity, but you're here, okay? You just grow in, walk around and pretend to be God. So you can become him. Because the whole kingdom looks like the Father. And the more you look like the Father, the more you'll do in that kingdom. The more you can govern. Everybody inherits the kingdom. What you do in the kingdom will be very different. How much you look like the Father. Having a jacket doesn't mean you look like the Father. If you settle for a jacket, you settle for ministry as opposed to the person of Christ. Okay? You want to look like Him. Maturity, living here, is to become like the Father. And this is, a ve- I, this is so important. This should be Christianity 101, what I'm about to say. A father lays down his life, his time, his assets, and his name just to give somebody the opportunity to choose him. And we see it all through Scripture. So, Moses, Moses says, I'm going to read it. Oh, I'll just tell you, it's there. Moses says, I'd rather be written out of the book of life that these Hebrews be saved. He says, surely they are sinful, terrible people. And I'd rather be written out of the book of life that they be saved. Now, either that's true or it's not. But he's talking from heaven to heaven, so you can't fake it. (laughs) Okay? That's maturity. Paul says about the Hebrews, my people, he says, I'd rather be written out of the book of life that they be saved. He's gone to love. Faith, hope, love. Yep. He's gone to love, laying down his life for another. Jesus said, I'd rather be written out of the book of life that, ever, that these people be saved. Who? The people who are killing me. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Be like your Father in heaven, who sends rain on the good and the evil, the just and unjust. This works for the knowledge of good and evil, and it contains effort. Okay, and the trouble is, if you maintain a standard, you judge people who don't maintain that standard by the speed you're going. If you've ever gone on a diet and you've lost lots of weight and got fit, you see someone stuffing their face, you go, look at that guy. Because you've changed by your own strength. But if health is given to you as a gift, you just want to give that person health as a gift. Yeah. Yeah. This contains effort. This contains effort. This contains complete surrender based on the nature of God alone. His work alone It can only be received as a gift that no man can boast. Yeah. The high priest was not allowed to sweat. The kingdom can only be received. Only be received. No flesh will inherit the kingdom. It's just believing the promise because God chooses to reveal himself as invisible word. If you take him on his invisible word as opposed to what you taste, touch and see, sensual, sensitive, you wait on that invisible word, you've loved God. Because God just says, will you love me as I am? And then you know me, and knowing me, you become like me. Servant, young son, the way they live in ministry. Mature son, becoming like the father. Jesus is my saviour. Jesus is my Lord, ministry. I do what he says. Jesus is my friend. And friends don't have to do anything. And in leaving ministry, you'll have more earthly fruit and eternal fruit 
than years of ministry. Jesus is saying, will you know me as I am? Am I Jesus your Lord? Can I'm only Jesus saviour for a certain epoch. I'm only Jesus the, your Lord for a certain epoch or how you frame up your eternity. But will you know me for who I am? What do I think of the weather? What's my favourite colour? How am I feeling today? Do you know me? Who saw the Mount of Transfiguration? His friends saw it. Not all the disciples. Only three. Not three of 500. Not, was it 120, 70, 12? Three. And of that three, only one went to the cross. And that one didn't die. That one took his place on the earth. Mary, he's your mother. John is now your son. Friendship. Here's a truth that this is the first time I'm saying it. <laughs> Who went to the Mount Trans Transfiguration saw Jesus in his glorified self? Peter, James, John. What do they have in common? They all had Satan rebuked in them. Your DNA, bad DNA. Who's your father? Peter, get behind me, Satan. James and John, you don't know what spirit you are of. Knowledge of good and evil, what you deserve. Here, I don't care they kicked us out. I'm dying for Capernaum. <laughs> I'm Peter, I'm dying for the whole world. I love everyone. I'd rather be written out the book of life that those people in Capernaum most people killing me will give, be given the opportunity to know the Father. This is your true nature. Give the Father's nature. You can't earn it. You only discover it. I'm not teaching you anything. I'm just reminding you who you are. I'm not teaching your spirit. I'm just transforming your mind to know what's already here. So you can receive the goodness of God. And it just flows out, flows out. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to all the earth. <laughs> Doing very well. <laughs>